So we are really having a fall deluge lately. I think we've got about six inches in the last couple of days. Um, but everything's growing really well. I've got some Chinese cabbage going here, Napa cabbage, some beets that are pretty well ready, ready to harvest and they're pretty big. Uh, I got this rosemary plant that uh, probably going to just keep out here until the frost. But what I wanted to do today was go on a foraging expedition. There's a lot of different things that are producing right now. We've got persimmon trees that are starting to ripen. Um, we've got the hazelnuts. Kyle has a bunch of shiitake mushroom logs that are growing tons of mushrooms and he's offered to trade them for wine. So I'm going to go over there and harvest a bunch of shiitakes. At Lauren's house in Rutledge, there's a bunch of uh, fully grown uh, pecan trees, hardy pecan trees, and right now the husks are starting to split and the nuts are falling out of them. So we're going to go gather a bunch of uh, pecans as well. And this is just like a bounty of delicious food from the fall. But right behind me, I've got a hazelnut that I took some small uh, shoots off of a hazelnut bush over in the sky house warren and brought them over here a few years back and now they've grown into these full bushes this year they were loaded more than i've ever seen them uh, be in the past and also all the bushes in the sky house warren were just laden so laden that the branches were just like weighed down with nuts the nuts are starting to fall out of the husks and landing on the ground and so i'm going to go around and collect a bunch and see what we've got. Um, I did harvest a few of them earlier and I was finding that a lot of them are blanks. So they've got empty shells. And I don't understand why that's happening. Well, hazelnuts are kind of a lot of work for uh, the amount that you get. And also considering the fact that I think a lot of these are empty, like this one just doesn't feel like it has anything in it. It's hard to tell if any of these have anything in them. That one has a nut in it, kind of shrivelly and moldy, and, and pretty much like there's nothing in there. It's just like completely deflated. Yeah, you can see that it's basically just like empty, undeveloped, underdeveloped. Not a single one that's any good in all these. So either I'm going to take that bush out or I'm going to figure out what's wrong with it. From looking it up online, uh, it seems that certain varieties just are more likely to have blanks than other varieties. There's some people that claim it also might be a nutrient deficiency. I don't know, the soil here is pretty amazing, so I don't think that that's really the issue. They got plenty of water this year. Um, I just don't see a reason why they would be um, not producing nuts. That is what a hazelnut is supposed to look like inside. Full nut. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. They're not bad. Um, probably a little better after roasting them, but pretty good raw too. does not like riding in cars, even if it's for two minutes, which is how long this trip's going to be. In better condition than the house was. Oh, that's <laughs> great.
See, a lot of these clusters have just been falling down in the storm. Gotten a lot of rain, and they're already split, so you just pick the pecans right out of them. Now these ones are from a different tree, so they're kind of longer and pointier. Um, right now we're grabbing the branches that are higher up with a rope and pulling them down so we can reach them, and then just pulling the clusters of nuts off of them because uh, it's so much easier that way because you just grab clusters of nuts instead of um, having to find them on the ground or knock them down or wait until they fall. But some of these haven't opened yet, so I'm just gonna leave them and let them uh, split on their own and dry out. gonna do? I'm gonna bite those. So this is the full harvest of pecans so far. It's quite a bit. I think this will be plenty for the year. And what's funny is that uh, little grubs have been falling out of some of these and then I collect the grubs and I feed them to the chickens. I'm here in Kyle's um, mushroom log patch and there's a bunch of shiitakes that are flushing. I've gotten to them a little bit late, but they're still in good shape, so I'm gonna harvest them anyways, and I'm gonna do a trade with Kyle for wine. Um, Cause I have abundant wine, and it looks like he's got abundant mushrooms. There were actually, there's a bunch of logs over there that were flushing like crazy just a couple days ago, and it looks like he harvested most of them. So I'm gonna take these ones that are left, and uh, gather them, bring them home, and maybe dry them, maybe have some of them fresh. I don't think I can eat this many fresh right away. I'm just gonna fry up some of these mushrooms that are a little bit old and opened up pretty far to see you know, that the quality is. They probably won't last very long in the fridge at this stage. Mm. <clears throat> some local critter, critter eggs and some shiitake mushrooms. It's a great combination. Got to wash the mushrooms better because they have a little bit of grit in them. So good though, even that far gone. So this is a wild persimmon, and some of them you get pretty tasty, and some of them are super astringent. 
when they make your mouth pucker up and it stays there for several minutes where you feel like your cheeks are sticking to your teeth and your gums and Mm, so sweet and tasty. Such an amazing flavor. And sometimes you don't know when you're actually going to experience that. Like, I could eat that and like a minute later, suddenly my mouth would just be gummed up. Sometimes the astringent stuff isn't in the skin, it's in the, um, around the seeds and in the flesh of the fruit like here. But this is so tasty, it's worth the, the risk. So far, it's fine. <clears throat> There's several seeds in each, each uh, fruit. This one has six developed seeds and two that are un undeveloped. Um, There's sort of like a little capsule around each seed. You have to chew through and peel off to get to the seed itself. That was a good one. Because um, like I said, sometimes they're super astringent and it's not pleasant to eat them. But after they sat on the tree for this long, uh, they sort of get riper and riper. You can also pick them when they're fully ripe and then just let them sit on the counter until they get soft. And uh, you can also, you know, process them, take the seeds out of them, use them in uh, baked goods and jam and stuff like that. There's like a little bit of astringency, but mostly nothing. And this one is plenty ripe. And a long time ago, I developed this character from Blanchard Springs Cabins who likes an unripe persimmon. He likes it because it makes his mouth pucker up like this. I love that unripe persimmon. <clears throat> that was my character, this old guy that lives in Blanchard Springs Caverns. And I think it's Arkansas. So that wraps up our fall foraging video. Hope you liked it. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. And also, if you don't know about the Hardcore Sustainable Instagram, um, or as the cool kids these days call it, Insta, check that out, just at Hardcore Sustainable on Instagram. And then also the Facebook, where both of those things, you get a little bit more uh, regular postings than my videos, because my videos take time. Um, I'm gonna keep the video is coming when I go to Florida again this winter, and I uh, hope you'll stay, stay with me there. Keep on watching my videos.